All right, so this part's going to be just kind of a little bit of an unofficial look into static and how it works. So static can be used in a couple of different ways. Um, so the first one is within a function. Not treasure. Oh, for your thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is a, a, a quick example of how static is going to work if you use it in a function. This is not very commonly used. Usually if you're doing this, you probably want to go ahead and make an object variable or a property. Um, I did start it, but this is kind of the in between the talk, talk about static parts. It is recording though. Uh, so now if I run this. Apparently I didn't put it anywhere. I forgot to save it. All right, so when I run this, you notice what it does is it counted here from zero to nine. Now this wasn't I that I was counting. This is actually that static variable inside of the thing. Um, and to prove that, so now I is gonna go from 10 to 20 and I still get the same output because foo every time I go through this thing is it's keeping track of the value it was on the last time we ran through. So on the very first run only, st static foo is going to be initialized as the value zero and then, every, and then it's going to return that value and that plus plus is a post increment which means after it's returned it, increment it. And so since it's static it's going to keep that value in place in the function so the next time we go through foo is already equal to one. So this line here is not going to run again. So that's how to use them in functions. And again, it's not very common. Usually if this is the case, uh, it would be inside of a method in a class and you'd want to probably create a class variable to deal with that. So any questions on this one? All right. So the next one, uh, we're going to make a house class like we did in the example and I'll make a static size of a thousand. All right, so there's my definition of my house. I can ask the house, how big are you? And it's gonna tell me how big it is. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is create a couple of houses. Uh, sure.
End of line, yep. So it's going to be a new line or a carriage return new line or whatever. All right, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to have What's that? Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. So made a slight difference there, so now I'm passing in the type of house. Now I could do the same sort of thing that I did a second ago if I went ahead and extended these houses. Uh, but since we have not a whole lot of lines to work with, I won't do that. So now when I run it, I'm going to get, I'm a thousand bungalow and I'm a thousand shack, right? Now if we go back in here and after we echo this thing, we say uh, house. Question is two thousand what? Okay, so now I'm going to echo it again. Now I've only called this one thing, and I've called it on house. I haven't called it on the individuals. So now you notice that both of them changed when I made that one call. So at this point, the shack and the bungalow have both been upgraded by that single call. I could, but not using this static on the class. So if we wanted, um, it's static, so it's actually on the class, not on the object. So you would still reference it as house colon colon size. Yep, I could do a set size. Whenever you use self, you're referring to the instantiated object. No. I'm actually referring to the class. So in this case, self, at the time when it compiles the code, can essentially be replaced with the word house. So it'd be the same as me writing house colon colon size equals size. So now when you change size to bundle, you can also change size to stack. Yep. So if I go. Okay. So now remember I've got the. It should say it's a thousand for both of them, and then I'm setting the size of the bungalow. But because I'm setting it on a static variable, I've now changed the size of both of the houses. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. No, you cannot. You get an error. Like that? Oh, gotcha. I haven't even got a static function in here yet. If I do what? I believe I get a warning. get a strict standard accessing a static property in a non-static way. But I just turn off 
I would not recommend it. All right, so let's do, uh, let's go here. So now, if I change this and I add this word static, what I've essentially done now is instead of calling bungalow set size, I would now call it this way, so it'd be house colon colon set size. So it's still a function, but it's a function on the class level, not on the object level. And it works the same way. So th there's one more concept we'll cover real quick, and this is the concept of late, uh, late static binding. So I'm going to go ahead and make this no longer be static. All right, so if I run this again right now, everything's going to say it's a house. Um, so what I want to do is make a couple more classes real quick. Um, not public. Oh, sorry. Yep. That sounds better. Thanks. All right. We're going to make a couple more classes. All right, so let's see what this does right now when you run it. So I've got a non-static method set size, so I need to go and change that back to uh, calling it on my bungalow or something else here. Okay, so we're back to the pretty much the same example from a moment ago. Now what I want to do though is I want to say, all right, we've got this size and I want to make it so that all of my bungalows are a particular size and all of my shacks are a particular size, but they're different particular sizes. What's that? Nope. Okay. So now I've got a new static that's referred to right there. Um, yeah. So we'll write that. And we'll run it again. And I have a syntax error. Thank you. Oh, man.
What's that? Oh, thank you. And I took off the end of line. All right, we'll get there in a second. <laughs> Live coding is always amazing, right? I accidentally deleted them, apparently. Okay, so there we are. You notice it didn't change anything, okay? So now, you remember how I said self becomes whatever class it is at the time when you compile this or run it? So self uh, on get size, since this occurs inside of house right here, it's always referring to house size, which is a thousand, right? So if I change this to the word static, this is PHP's new late static, it's not even that new, it's in PHP 5.3, which is now in its end of life. Uh, it now binds that later, so it binds it at the time when we run it and we know actually what class it is we are dealing with. So in the case of the bungalow, it'll actually replace it with the word bungalow, and in the case of the word shack, it'll replace it with the word shack. So now we've got closer to what we want, right? We've now got uh, the bungalow starting out at 2200 and the shack starting out 450. Now you notice we did do a call in here uh, to set the size of the bungalow, right? But we have the same thing going on in set size, right? Set size is referring to self size, which means Bungalow calling set size at this point is actually changing house size, not bungalow size. So we can change this as well. And now when we run it, it should change the bungalow on the second. So there we go. Does that make sense? All right. Any other static questions before we go on to the second one? Yeah? Yes, this is a, like, the, uh, the question was if he wanted to change the size of those independently, would you be better off not using a static? The answer is yes, unless this was a case where you want all shacks to be one size and all bungalows to be one size. Um, if you wanted a house or a shack or a bungalow that you could have different objects that had different sizes, even of the same type, so you could have a bungalow that was 2200 and a bungalow that was 2400, then static is absolutely not the right way to go. But if you want to change it for all of that type, then that's where you would use static. 